cornerback tandem of all time, Dennis Thurman and Everson Walls. Number 10. They were wonderful. They knew when to jump routes. Intercepted the 20. Touchdown, Dallas. And then once the ball's in the air, those guys felt like it was their ball. They had a lot of things that you just can't teach to players. In the early 80s, the Cowboys were still very much America's team. The handoff door set up the middle. Here he goes. And though lost among the stars of Dallas, our 10th ranked tandem of number 24, Everson Walls, and number 32, Dennis Thurman, will top at least one list. They will be the most unlikely pair to be on that list. Both of them weren't supposed to be in the league. Everson was undrafted, and Dennis, bless his soul, 11th round draft choice. I mean, we don't have an 11th round anymore. One of those great stories in the NFL about a guy who slipped through the cracks of the draft. That's why, yes, it's great to go to the combine. He may go. When the game starts, can you make a play? Dennis was the older guy, and, and Everson and Mike Downs, a bunch of them were young guys, and they called them Thurman's Thieves. Intercepted. Picked off by the Cowboys. Our 10th ranked tandem was at its best in 1981, combining for 20 interceptions. Thurman helped all of them. Really knew the ins and outs of how to play the position. Dennis was pretty straightforward, but I thought Ev played the position with a natural fluidity. Everson Wall snagged 11 interceptions in 81 as an all-pro rookie. I'm out there trying every play just like anyone else, and I think my statistics are proving that, you know, I can be as good as any professional ball player out there. Number 24, Everson Walls, will not win every sprint, but he will beat everyone to a football in flight. Everson Walls might have had the best ball recognition skills of any cornerback I've ever seen. How did he catch it? Everson Walls drove me nuts because he was never where he was supposed to be. The common word, he's a gambler. <laughs> there are times we'd get Ed right where I wanted him. He'd jump in Art be 10 yards open down the field. Touchdown, Redskins! But I would always say, you show me a player that never has been beaten, then you're going to show me a player that's never taken a chance. He catches a couple and they catch a couple. <laughs> it kind of offsets each other. Walls reached four Pro Bowls in his first five seasons, and Dallas routinely placed among the league's interception leaders. Either one of those guys had great speed, but both of them were great athletes. That if the ball's in the air, they felt like it was their ball. That's just their mentality of coming into the league through the back door. He's going to score! Nine quarterback tandem of all time. Albert Lewis and Kevin Ross. The Chiefs teams of that era had tremendous secondaries. Intercepted on the far side. And it go defense. But Derek Thomas and the Chiefs pass rush got most of the attention. Out of respect for the rush, they're trying to throw the quick passing game. On a defense that led Kansas City to the NFL's best regular season record in the 90s. I like the character of this football team. Albert Lewis and Kevin Ross were the heart and soul of that Kansas City Chief defense. Ross and Lewis, the finest cornerback duo in the business. From 1984 to 1992, Kevin Ross and Albert Lewis manned the corners in Kansas City, proving a chief concern for opposing offenses. If you look back at the statistics from that era, should be intercepted in they were a team that was almost impossible to throw on. She was passing yards allowed. Most interceptions. And he's going to be intercepted. Lowest quarterback reading allowed. They were two great corners, but they had two different personalities. When you looked across at Albert, you knew you were playing against a, a guy who could cover. In terms of just watching somebody play that position with grace, Albert Lewis is at or near the top of the list. Tall, lanky guy, uh, great skills. Speed like a greyhound. He can lock down on somebody and just take out their number one receiver. He did a hell of a job. He never got off of you. And his impact extended beyond the secondary. This guy defined how to block a punt. Lewis blocked 10 punts with Kansas City. It's blocked by Albert Lewis. Resulting in four touchdowns. Picked up by Kevin Ross. It's a touchdown. 
I mean, they were the playmakers on that football team. Kevin Ross was the opposite of Lewis. He was cornerback as a punch in the face. Cornerback as a sense of physical harassment. Rock. Yeah, you got it all. The bullets and the other. You got it all. He fires a pass to the near side and it's intercepted. Kevin was five foot seven or eight. They said, you know what, we could take advantage of this guy. And probably about the middle of the first quarter, they realized that they underestimated Kevin Ross. It's intercepted. By the end of the game, you wanted to get off the field, get in the airplane, and never see him again. Our ninth-ranked duo combined for six Pro Bowls, appearing together in both 1989 and 1990. When he makes his break to go on a dig, if it's deep, I can read him. And it's intercepted and up the left sideline. Lewis and Ross... They were the epitome of what those Chiefs defenses were. And because they were such great athletes, and because they knew your offense probably as well as your wide receivers did, you were always worried that they were going to make the big pick on you. Tandem of all time, Dick Thomas and Willie Brown. Not I enough. Two terrific cover, you know, matchup cornerbacks. Overrated Raiders from the overrated Raider quasi-dynasty. The Raiders long ago earned a reputation for uniqueness. For number 26, Skip Thomas, it came in the form of a nickname. Dr. Death? Dr. Death. Dr. Death. Oh, Dr. Death? Yes. Yeah. Dr. Death to the 25, and Dr. has saved the day. Everyone thought it had something to do with his being tough. You don't have any fights this week? Oh, oh man, we got to have some fights. Holy Toledo, it's a free-for-all. It fit. It definitely fit. I guess I did strange things. I'd be with Madden. Instead of knocking a pass down, I'd take and kick at it like I was playing soccer. The 205-pound Dr. Death often meant lights out for opposing receivers. He just unloaded on him. And he picked off 16 passes in a four-season stretch. Nobody could get open. He shut you down. But was Thomas truly a great cornerback or merely a product of the familiar Raiders propaganda machine? Skip Thomas doesn't even register. To me, he was average at best. He was Dr. Death on the football field. He was Death on receivers. I thought that he was um, overrated. Bob Avellini spotted James Scott behind Skip Thomas for the remaining 36 yards. Teams in big spots felt like they didn't want to throw at Willie Brown. They could throw at Skip Thomas. You don't know how good he could have been. I mean, Skip didn't even know. He probably could have had 30 or 40 interceptions, but he didn't want interceptions. He would punch the ball, and we'd say, Skip, catch it. He wanted me to, to practice intercept, and I'd always tell him, pay me. A former college linebacker, Thomas's partner, Willie Brown, was more than unique. Number 24 was a trailblazer. Before becoming a Raider, Brown invented bump and run coverage in Houston and Denver. He couldn't get off the line. So the coaches said, boy, you know, you may have some here. From that point on, everybody in the league, even coaches of other teams, try to send their players to me, teach them how to play bump and run. Willie was a big intimidating corner um, and liked to jam guys and could run with guys. Willie Brown, as good as it gets. Great cover guy, great hands. Our number eight cornerback tandem won a Super Bowl and totaled five All-Pro selections and nine Pro Bowl appearances, all of them by Willie Brown. The Raiders captain also returned three postseason interceptions for touchdowns. You can't throw out you know, those kind of routes on me because you got one chance to play it. That's to me. He's going for a touchdown. You try it. A 50-yard interception returned by Willie Brown. The Super Bowl one was uh, against Fran Tarkenton. Same thing. Try to run out. And then again, you don't throw outs on me. Intercepted by the Oakland Raiders. Willie Brown. He's going all the way. Old man Willie. Touchdown Raiders. That's a great pick between Willie and Dr. Death because these two guys could cover. Seventh quarterback tandem of all time, Deion Sanders, and anyone? Plus anybody? There's only one Deion Sanders. Deion Sanders, to me, 
is the greatest single player that ever played the game of football. We've never seen another player with that type of skill level. And Deion Sanders leaped and intercepted on our 39. God, he was good. He was so good. In a game full of remarkable athletes, Deion Sanders stood out. In a five-team career, our number seven cornerback, solo artist, started opposite 13 different counterparts, almost none of whom struck fear in opposing offenses. We just go have fun and play ball. If you team Deion Sanders up with any average cornerback, you're going to get results. McIver intercepts on the 50. McIver gives it to Deion. He could make any tandem he played with the best tandem in football. No, I don't think you can say that. At least I want him to have a little talent. If the other corner can't play, you're going to find it. You can't hide a corner. Regardless of what cornerback started opposite him, this one-man tandem improved defenses. He may score! The Cowboys and 49ers became champions in Sanders' first season with each team. He could more take away not only a player, but almost the side of an entire field. You're able to put Dion on one receiver, and you design a defense around the other ten. So it narrowed the playing field. And he throws, passes, pick! He would bait quarterbacks into throwing and pick it off. Quarterbacks understood that just because a guy looked open against Deion Sanders didn't mean he was open. He loved being thrown at because he could score. Bam. He was smart. Intercepted by Deion Sanders on the 25 to 30. Deion Sanders going for a long, long touchdown. Deion was never a great tackle. Let's, Let's get that out of the way. Dion would lay more tackles than anybody on the football field. Dion made what he called business decisions. And for Dion, a business decision was, I'm not throwing my body in there. Get him, Dion! There were a few times when he was in various uniforms uh, that I saw him tackle. Dion Sanders blindsided him. Are you looking for Dion to come up and throw him in the ground? No. He did what he had to do in order to be one of the great cornerbacks. The man known as Primetime was named an All-Pro six times, played in eight Pro Bowls, and was the 1994 Defensive Player of the Year. Another classic by Deion. Deion Sanders deserves whatever he gets when it comes to accolades as being one of the all-time great cornerbacks. He changed the uh, vocabulary. No one talked about shutdown corners before Deion Sanders. Over the middle, Jerry Rice intercepted by Deion Sanders. The idea that there's... Another shutdown corner, the way Dion was, is ridiculous. There's no such thing. There never was and never will be another Dion Sanders. Neon Dion and anybody else, I'd put it out there, yes. Back tandem of all time, JT Thomas and Mel Blunt. To mention Mel Blunt and Deion Sanders in the same sentence is insulting to Mel Blunt. That's the best quarterback tandem ever because Mel Blunt's the best cornerback ever, and anyone who says otherwise is wrong. JT on the other side was great. I mean, those guys personified the way the game was played. I couldn't imagine uh, anybody being better than Mel Blunt. If he was in the vicinity, it had to be an awesome throw to get through there, or he was going to pick it off. Oh, I just pitied those receivers. He was huge. You did got to put it in the right perspective. Back in those days, they could put their hands on you, push you all over the field till the ball was in the air. Bell Blunt, Dumpy. You could do your mugging, you know, up and down the field and nobody cared. Nobody had a better name for that position because he was blunt. He couldn't get around him. He'd beat you up. He'd throw you out of bounds. I mean, it was like running against a mountain. One of the things that I always wanted to do was let people know that this is my territory. I didn't like it when he was on my side. We didn't we didn't get as much action as we had liked. Blunt had Renfro beautifully covered one on one. I think the you know ball club as a whole played well. Why are Blunt and Thomas not higher on our list? They benefited from playing with one of the best defenses ever, the steel curtain of the 1970s. Let's be honest. If you threw a water balloon into the huddle of that Steelers team, you'd splatter about six Hall of Famers. I made the comment uh, at my Hall of Fame induction how fortunate I was to play on arguably the greatest defense of all time. Every one of these guys on this team played in the Pro Bowl. It's pretty impressive. Left cornerback, number 24, J.T. Thomas. James Thomas Jr. was the Steelers' first-round draft pick in 1973. 
He made the Pro Bowl in 1976 and picked off 20 passes in his career. JT was probably underrated for his talent. I think he was overlooked. I think he was a heck of an athlete, a heck of a defender. To the outside, picked off by JT Thomas. Oh, JT was very good. I mean, he's not one of your legendary quarterbacks, not in a class with a guy like Mel Blunt. I don't agree with this particular selection. Somebody had to be along for the ride, and it was Thomas, a good little player. But I think he was along for the ride on some of those teams. He never became the player they thought he was going to be, which was they thought he would be the equal of Mel Blunt. Due in large part to Mel Blunt's physical domination, in 1978, the NFL modified its stance on permissible contact with receivers. Every year, the National Football League comes up with some rules changes. This year, the most important changes concern pass coverage and the interaction between receivers and defenders. Any contact beyond five yards that's initiated by the defensive player is to be called illegal contact. They changed the game because he was too good. Guys couldn't even get off the line against him. That'll be a penalty on Mel Blunt. I'm honored that they thought enough of the way I played the game that they would change the rule and call it the Mel Blunt rule. Mel would find a way today. Would he be as effective now as then? Boy, there's almost no way of knowing that. You could do a lot of damage in five yards. Mel Blunt would be a Hall of Famer. I don't care where he played and when he played. Trying to drive. Knocked down by Mel Blunt. Blunt finished with a Steelers record 57 interceptions. But the resume of our number six cornerback tandem is highlighted by wins in Super Bowls 9, 10, and 14. Mel Blunt and J.T. Thomas, the best cornerback pairing ever. Case closed. And now, the number five cornerback tandem of all time, Dick LeBeau and the Hall of Famers. These guys could play. Night train lane, intercepts a Brody pass. Intercepted by Dick LeBeau, and Barney scored unmolested. The Lions in their 60s had one of the best secondaries probably in NFL history. Dick LeBeau was, for years, considered one of the most solid, smart, consistent players in the game. And then on the other side, you kind of had two generations of Hall of Fame players, Night Train Lane, and then Lem Barney. I told them both that, you know, I put them in the Hall of Fame because everybody was so busy throwing over on my side of the field. The Lions placed a cornerback in the Pro Bowl every year of the decade. There aren't too many teams that have had a run like that. Number 81, Night Train Lane. Number 44, Dick LeBeau. And number 20, Lem Barney. Each rank in the top 15 for career interceptions. When you get those kind of interceptions, you know, it's pretty doggone good. I believe Night Train Lane was the best ever at cornerback. Night Train Lane was one of these physical players. Every bit of 6'4", of 6'5", six, six, and maybe 218. Here's a guy that could have played in any era. But the play is diagnosed perfectly by Night Train Lane. He had to decide at the speed to get up and beat somebody that halfway to death. Night Train literally went for the head. I mean, they used to talk about the Night Train necktie. And uh, the quarterbacks didn't like Night Train because he was a reckless player. He would let the receiver get free. Then once the ball was in there, he'd go pick it. Night Train lane intercepts the Brody pass. Most gamblers end up getting run off out of the league, but not Night Train. Dick LeBeau renders stability to the defensive backfield with his crunching tackles and key interceptions. Night Train Lane and Dick LeBeau were two different types of defensive backs. Quarterbacks started throwing over to Dick LeBeau's side, which was just as bad. Veteran cornerback Dick LeBeau, number 44, is so savvy that he looks as though he is running the offensive pattern. He's still in the top ten in the National Bowl League history in interceptions. One thing about Dick LeBeau, he wasn't as big as Night Train, but he is a great student of the game. Never caught him out of position. He always knew where he was going. He just solid as the rock of your border. At the other corner is Lem Barney, who might be the most versatile athlete in the game today. And then Lem Barney came along, and, and physically, he was just such a great athlete. Lem uh, was probably the quickest guy I've ever seen. His feet were like uh, he was gliding around. He was more than just a Hall of Fame cornerback. He did things that were spectacular. Lem Barney scampered 45 yards into the end zone. The perfect example is in his very first game, the very first play, he jumps the route. The season wasn't even 10 minutes old when number 20, 
rookie Lem Barney shocked the partisan Packer backers with a 24-yard interception. Here was a defensive player who compiled almost 4,000 yards. That's a pretty funny idea of defense. When Starr put the ball in the air, it was like putting it on a plane bound for Miami with either Barney or LeBeau willing to play the role of hijacker. They had three superstar cornerbacks in the same decade. When the people talk about the great secondaries, the Lions get overlooked because they didn't win a championship. That doesn't mean they don't deserve to be there. That was one of the great defensive secondaries ever, both of them, first generation and second. The number four quarterback tandem of all time, Bob Jeter and Herb Adderley. Four. Why you got him at number four? I thought they were better than that. You ever play against a better tandem? Well, now. They face their opponents with a sword in one hand and a sledgehammer in the other. I guess not. <laughs> I guess not. They were damn good. Kicked off beautifully by Jeter of the Green Bay Packers. Number 21, Bob Jeter, and number 26, Herb Adderley, patrolled the secondary for the great Packers teams of the 1960s. Beautiful save by Adderley. This unlikely defensive pairing came together thanks to the most famous face of that era. This is Vince Lombardi coach of the finest football team in the world. Herb was a great offensive running back in Michigan State. Bob Jeter was a great running back in Iowa. What the hell's going on out here? Bob Jeter set a Rose Bowl record, 194 yards in nine carries. These are both great runners. They had great speed. Bobby Jeter skirts the sidelines here to the 10 and into the end zone. But the Packers already had future Hall of Fame ball carriers Paul Hornig and Jim Taylor. When Vince Lombardi saw Herb Adderley, he said, this guy is just too good to put him on the offensive side of the ball where he may not play, where this guy can really be a defensive star. I could run because I was a running back, so I used to want to get my hands on the football and take off and go the other way with it. Picked off by Herb Adderley of Green Bay. All the way for a Green Bay touchdown. Bob Jeter and Herb Adderley have something you won't see today. They're both over six foot. They both were over 200 pounds, and they both would hit you. And now the hitting begins. And the running back, I took a heck of a beating. And I figured, well, now I got a chance to dish it out. I'm going to dish a little bit out. Some of those ferocious tackles I saw about Herb Adley. And a crushing tackle. When it comes to stealing enemy passes, here's the man they can't forget. All pro Herb Adderley. For about four years, they would always say I was the second best corner in the league, and Herb Adderley was always the guy who was number one. He had the unique distinction. In 1965, he did not have a touchdown pass thrown on him the whole season. He won the whole season with no touchdown passes. On January 14th, 1968, the Oakland Raiders met the Green Bay Packers in Miami's famous Orange Bowl to determine the world champion of professional football. They had been told not to throw to the right side. Fourth quarter, he said, what the heck, I might as well take a shot. And he threw it over there, and Herb picked it and ran it back. A 70-yard by Herb was the first defensive touchdown in Super Bowl history. Our number four cornerback tandem finished with a total of five All-Pro designations, seven Pro Bowls, and three championships. They were two great quarterbacks. The three quarterback tandem of all time. Ronnie Lott and Eric Wright. Those two guys helped put the 49ers on the map. Ronnie Lott intercepts. In NFL history, by far, that was the best secondary ever to play the game. 21 and 42 are two numbers that Niner fans will never forget. That's because Eric Wright and Ronnie Lott saved San Francisco from its own secondary. Wow. Jeez. The 49ers had just disintegrated, and that personified itself with our defensive secondary. Our defensive backs couldn't be found on the tapes. In 1981, Bill Walsh added our number three quarterback tandem with back-to-back -back draft picks. In 1981, they were thrown into fire pretty quickly. When Ronnie Lott and those guys started playing, we all stood up and watched them play. Ronnie Lott was the best defensive back I've ever, uh, I've ever seen. Because Ronnie was so highly talented, I don't think people went after him. Eric got all the attention. 
But after, like, midway through the season, and it is intercepted. you couldn't throw it at Eric anymore. These guys, they were rookies, but they had confidence through the roof. They were 27th in defense in 1980, and they drafted those starting defensive backs. They went up to second this year. And it is intercepted, taken away by Ronnie Rod. Our third-ranked tandem capped its rookie season with a Super Bowl. 49ers have won it. Ronnie was one of those special, unique talents. Ronnie just intimidated people. When we take the and feel it's not our brotherhood that's going to do it for us. Let's hit him like we always do. We're a machine, and we just knock the hell out of people. You are practically raised at Ronnie Lott. Ronnie Lott, bad man. What a man. That is martial arts, black belt, I'm looking to hurt people on this football field kind of intimidation. Eric was on the other side. Eric was very athletic, very, very fast. Eric was a pure corner. Eric Wright, to me, had this sense that as soon as I am allowed to touch you, I'm going to clobber you. Great play. Here's Nicole Pro the ship. I thought Eric Wright was one of the best man-to-man -man cover guys um, to ever play the position. They were hyper-aggressive backs. Intercepted by Wright! That were not afraid to go for the ball and make the big play. I think if Eric Wright and Ronnie Lott were sitting around, they would have to admit, why did the Niners' offense get so much love? We were as important, if not more important. It was Eric Wright who preserved Frisco's NFC Championship win in 81. Yes, there was a catch, but Eric Wright made the most awesome play in the Dallas Cowboy game. History could have definitely been different. And our number three duo helped deliver the Niners their second title as well. Marino fires to the goal line, and it is intercepted. Yeah. Back on by Eric Look at the 1984 Super Bowl against the great Dan Marino. And the 49ers have won the Super Bowl. It's anchored in that secondary. <laughs> right and lot. What made that secondary so great? Ronnie Lott intercepts because you couldn't just pick on one guy. I don't know where those two guys left and right are on your list, but I think that's probably as good as it gets. The number two quarterback tandem of all time, Hanford Dixon and Frank Minifield. Actually, I'd probably put him number one, to be honest with you, because I played him so much every year, twice a year. The Browns burn Cincinnati on the bomb on the very first play. Two guys, a uh, tremendous amount of impact. When you talk about the Browns' defense, you began with Minifield and Dixon. It was pick your poison. Oh, my. What's an offense going to do when you've got a shutdown corner on each side? Frank Minifield and Hanford Dixon were perfectly cast in their city. Not only great corners, but uh, tough guys. They were, in many ways, the, the personality of that defense. Look at the surroundings, the fans, the noise. This crowd can't get enough. The weather. We have a heat wave here at the stadium today with a wind chill factor of about five. Frank Minifield and Hanford Dixon fired up Cleveland's faithful fans in the mid-80s. Then... Name them. They're the ones that really started what became known as the dog pound. It was after one game, Hanford said, I think we got a dog pound out there in the bleachers. Right in front of the dog pound. The dog pound, those people were fanatics. Kind of make the hair stand up on the back of your neck. Between them and the dog pound, one of the most difficult places and teams to play against. The pulse of the dog defense was the best set of corners in the game. All pros Frank Menefield and Hanford Dixon. They're obviously, as a unit, the best in the National Football League. Firing at the right side, intercepted. Hell of a job, defense! Hell of a job! They weren't dominant because of their athletic greatness. They were dominant because of their mental will. The thing that enables them to be effective is their personality, their attitude. There's no doubt about it that the Cleveland Browns possess the two best cover guys in the game. We are complete corners. We hit, we run, we tackle, we can do it all. These guys were man-to-man. -man. They dogged receivers. They were in-your-face cornerbacks. These two guys would push the contact rules 
to the absolute limit. And I remember, you know, Sam Weiss just screaming at the wide receivers in practice. No, you're not going to play that. They're going to eat you up. Oh, no. They're going to take you down. <laughs> and if they were playing today, they wouldn't be playing because it would be a flag on every play. That's a hell of a job by our defense again. Dixon tormented wide receivers at the line of scrimmage. There's no place you could have thrown that ball. In 1987, only seven passes were thrown in the direction of hand for Dixon. From 1986 to 1988, Dixon was a regular in Honolulu. And each one of those years, Frank Minifield joined him. Firing on the right side, intercepted. I think there is definitely some competition going on between the two of us. I think that I'm a pretty good cornerback, and Frank thinks he's the best thing since uh, Superman. Minifield also thought in the third person. I think that Frank Minifield has the ability to think that he is never in a situation where he's not going to win. Hell of a job, Minnie! You would have had to see them play every week of the season to know how good they were. They are the only tandem in NFL history to attend three Pro Bowls together. That's how good they were, and they were the center of the Browns' defense. So why are Dixon and Minifield only number two? Two words, the drive. And the Broncos are 98 yards away from where they need to go. If you don't win it all, you're a failure. They came up short in the playoffs. Maybe their legacy isn't what it should be. Here's the problem with the drive. Marty decided, we're only going to rush three guys against John Elway. Even the best cornerbacks in the world. The was wide open in that soft middle. Can't cover a wide receiver forever. Fires over the middle. Touchdown. And that's what happened in the drive. They were two of the best covered cornerbacks in the history of the National Football League. Intercepted, Frank Minifield. Thinking about cornerback tandems, I would put them right, right at the top. And now the number one cornerback tandem of all time, Lester Hayes and Mike Haynes. Mike and Lester Hayes, they were the guys. I don't see any two corners that ever played together could match those two. And intercepted. Sets up, delivers one to screen. The intercepted Hayes. 18 yards. And 10 Touchdown, Raiders. Fearless. Fearless quarterbacks. Before becoming the best tandem of all time, Hayes and Haynes were great individual cornerbacks. Hayes began his career learning from Raider legend Willie Brown. It didn't take long for the man called the judge to establish his own brand of cornerback justice. One of the best cornerbacks at intimidating. He surely was intimidated. Lester Hayes, number 37, was lethal. He was a linebacker in college, so he's a little stronger, a lot bigger than me. Delivers a pop, not many people can. We all know what Lester's like. Lester liked to hit things. Lester was a more physical guy. He'd try to beat you up on the line. He really did go after people. Lester Hayes had a year in 1980 that was arguably the greatest year a corner has ever had. As a cover man and also as a tackler, he was just phenomenal. He just took the game over. When it came to covering, no one did it better. Lester Hayes! Hayes was the NFL's Defense Player of the Year, leading the league with 13 interceptions. Down to the 20, the 10, into the end zone! He added another five in the playoffs, helping Oakland to Super Bowl 15. Super Sunday, what a day. I can't believe it's like a dream come true. It's unbelievable. Hayes' early success came with scrutiny for artificially improving his hands. Stick him, baby. He had that stick him everywhere on his body. All of his feet, all of his hands, and all of his arm, his jersey, everywhere. We always used to tell Lester, don't touch us. We don't want you to touch us. That's how he got all those interceptions. Way up the field toward Hill. Intercepted. He caught half of them just by the stick him catching that ball before his hands ever did. Unfortunately, as the story goes, we had to stick him out long several years later. That's because Lester abused the system. <laughs> Like all number one picks, Haynes blitzed into the NFL with salvos of publicity, which hyped him into instant superstardom. Hall of Famer Mike Haynes spent his first seven seasons with the Patriots, making six Pro Bowls. 
If you're looking for Idea Corner, would be Mike Hayes. Mike had, had everything you want to look for. 43 inch vertical, 6'2 and a half, 6'3. Weighed about 200 pounds. Had long arms. Fires it long and deep left side. Could be picked off. It is. Tremendous speed, faster than blunt. He's down the sideline. Look at the speed of that man. Touchdown. I studied a lot. Number 40 succeeded because his helmet was firmly rooted to his head. It's really scientific. If I can slow the guy down like one tenth of a, of a second, I'm really doing a great job. Our number one cornerback tandem was created as a result of a contract dispute. Haynes played out his option with the Patriots in 1982. The following November, his contract was awarded to the Raiders for two draft picks. It was the greatest steal of, my, of all time. When the Raiders got Mike Keynes, they said, oh, my God. From the start, an intimidating Raider defense dominated. With big plays by number 37, left corner Lester Hayes. And by number 22, right corner Mike Hayes. What do you do if you're at offense? Now you have two strong guys in there. Where did they throw the ball? Let them do whatever they want to do. Teams cannot throw the ball on us. You can forget about it. Anybody throwing on you. Our number one quarterback tandem combined for 14 Pro Bowls and starred on the Raiders' run to a win in Super Bowl 18. And the celebration will begin. The Los Angeles Raiders, Kings of the Hill and Super Bowl 18. The best two I ever coached. No question about it. I, I can take a nap, go watch the game on TV. Okay, Mike, good, yeah. That's it, good. That's it. All right. Tremendous, tremendous. Jump ball and intercepted. It's hard to find tandems like that. There's not two that I can think of who would be better. Great pick.